Ms. Upshaw, you have petitioned the court for a DNA test on four of your daughter-in-law's children. You say you have serious doubts because your son married, and I'll use your words, a loose woman who is rumored to have multiple lovers, including an old man whom she used for money. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Mason, you say your soon-to-be ex-husband is a mama's boy who won't stand up to his meddling mother, and you also say the DNA test results will finally shut his mother up and prove he is the father of all four of your children. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Upshaw, I take it you're not too fond of your daughter-in-law. Your Honor, this is my first time ever seeing this young lady with these many clothes on. Okay? So I'm not trying to bash this young lady because I just want the truth, but I never seen this young lady with these many clothes but on. But I'm young. I'm not old like her. But you see that dress? Look, there. what you think? Look at that. Come on now. That because, that, that because I wear that, I mean, I'm sleeping you with young, everybody. You young, but you got kids. You got a daughter you got to raise. You know, you got a daughter you got to raise. You can't set no example for no child looking like that. Is that... Well, let me just ask you, Ms. Mason, is this an outfit that you would wear, say, if you were going out with Mr. Mason on a date or something? No, Your Honor. That's the clothes that I took at home. And wear to the club. Now, I never wore it to the club, but I will wear it to the club. You will? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, since I met her, it's been nothing but drama, promiscuity, and looseness all around between her and my son. And I don't get in their business. Their business comes to me. It comes to you? Yes, ma'am. Carrie was bringing her home, and I, because, you know, he was, we were staying together in the apartment at the time, me and Carrie and my, my, my boyfriend. So he was sneaking her in the house at first, because her, her other two kids, because she got two previous kids. So he was bringing her home, and I did not know that she was in the room sometimes. I wouldn't know she, who he had in his room, because I, I, I didn't be in his bed like that. Do you remember meeting her? Yes, Your Honor. And what happened? She was telling him, like, you got other kids. Why you got kids in your room? You got other kids, you don't take care of them, so you need to be spending time with your own kids. That's how I met her. So you were dating Mr. Mason? Yes. She was just, I always, she always been like that ever since I met her. She just I always, like, got a smart mouth. She got a smart mouth. So she was kind of mean to you? Yes, ever since I met her. Mr. First, Mr. Mason, you, you checked out on me. You quiet over there. Yes, <laughs> it's just, I'm just sick of Your tired. wife says you're a mama's boy. <laughs> Are you? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm a mama boy. That's okay. That's what she thinks. I might well be a mama boy. Say it loud and proud. I might well be a mama boy. So you are a mama's boy. I'm a mama boy. And you listen to your mother. Do you believe she interferes in your relationship with your wife? No, I don't think so. It's just... This is what I got to say. Can I just present you with some evidence? What would you like to present, ma'am? Your Honor. This young lady and him went to the months. They said, I found out they was married on Facebook. What? Didn't Jerome, even know. hand me that. They didn't answer the phone for me for two weeks. This is My what? My friend brought a Facebook post that was posted on Facebook. A young lady that I know brought up to my house said, you know your son married. But why we got to tell her everything? We, we, me and her not together. Me and her son are together. So what when we you marry my son, business. you're marrying me. So, Mr. But it's not my responsibility Mr. to tell her. So wait a minute. You found out about them getting married on Facebook on or through fa a Facebook through post. A fa to, but, th through a friend. Through a I'm friend. Not a Facebook friend. Through a friend of whoever she friend, a girl who she friend You with. had no idea. No idea. Mr. Mason, when did you all decide to get married? November 14. Why didn't you tell your mother? It wasn't it's not her, her business. business. Mm. It wasn't her business? It's not. I'm just tired of hearing what's going on out there. It's just too much yapping, yapping, yapping. I'm just tired. I'm just trying to stop there right now. I'm trying to get, understand what's going on now. So let me ask you this. Is it you or is it your mom that wants the DNA test? She won't. I don't. That's all. I just want to see what's going on with the result. And I just want to take care of my kids. I don't want to be there. That's all I want to do. So, mom, <laughs> you shaking your head. Because you don't believe that these children are his. Your Honor, I give the twins the benefit of the doubt of being my grandkids more than I do any other... Let's start with Caleb. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to start with Caleb. Yes, ma'am. And I know there's a lot of children here, and I want to make sure we understand. Yes, ma'am. So, what doubts do you have as it relates to Caleb? Okay. Caleb, you know, I can't connect with him. He, he, he got a little old soul. Oh, he, okay. He, she said herself that she messed with old men for money in my living room to me. She already knew how I felt about Caleb. I said, I don't think that's my son, baby. She know how I felt. You know, it just some up. He got a. He got a. You feel old... like he has an old soul. Oh yeah. And you feel like that comes from the old man. Old man, old man, baby. <laughs> I do. That's why I feel. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Miss Mason, I want to go back to you for a moment. Now, she says part of the doubt with. 
uh, Caleb, is that you told her that you had some older man that you were in a relationship with. And I want to be clear, because she says, sleep with an old man for money. Now, I want to make sure I'm clear. Were you dating an older man? No, I just had... He was just a friend. So you're denying that there was ever a sexual relationship with the older man, or was there? No, it was a, relation, a sexual relationship. Yes, it was. Oh, but okay. It's... Hold up. Mr. Mason, now, have you heard about Caleb being someone else's child? Yes, Your Honor. She don't told him she met with an older man, so I know what's going on. Did you ever consider that he could potentially be Caleb's father? Well, like I said, I wasn't thinking like that, you know, because... I, I, I'm going to be honest, I was in love with her. Mom, Miss Upshaw, let's get to the twins. You don't doubt paternity of the twins? No, ma'am. I gave her the benefit of the doubt because twins runs on his daddy's side of the family. His daddy, his daddy brother got a set of twins and his grandma and sister got a set of twins. So I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Then somebody comes telling me this is other guy baby. And I did all this and involved myself and then my babies. I, I love them twins. I did for her. I don't try to help this young lady. Everything. Yes, them babies right there. They one on faith with my mama. I got more invested than I one on faith with my mama. Them my twins. And it would crush me if it come back. Them make my babies. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When this person came up to you and said they believe it's someone else's baby, explain what, what, what did they tell you? Okay, and then it was this guy, it was the guy questioning, she might know, but I'm not gonna mention no name. Okay. But she know who I'm talking about. I said, come here, let me take your picture. Come here. Oh, you saw the guy? Yeah. Cause I'm just being one, come here. Hey you, come here, I ain't gonna call no name. Let me take your picture, cause I'm getting tired of hearing that you, you fought to my grandchildren. Pam, I snapped this picture. So once you took the picture, what did you do? I compared them. I said, hmm, well, they got, they might have You took long... the picture back and you compared it yeah, to the baby? Yeah, I did, I did, I did. I think I showed Carrie, I don't know that I showed him or not. Yeah. So I'm like, well, they got little long heads, but then them my grandchildren, that little boy right there, Carrie looked just like my mama to me, in my soul and in my spirit to me. Miss Mason. Yes, Yon. This person they're talking about, do you know who it is? Yes, it's a friend. It's a friend. Like, me and CJ, we both know him, but me and CJ had broke up, like, after I had the twins. He put on Instagram, he took a picture with another woman with my baby, so I did the same as him. Okay. Well, we wanted to learn more about twins and whether or not there are genetic links or whether they are passed down through the generations. Um, through heredity, and uh, we have an expert, Dr. Samantha Brown-Parks, that I'd like to call upon. Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Brown-Parks into the courtroom? Sure. I have you go up to the witness stand right next to the judge. Sure. Watch your step, please. Hello, doctor. Hi there. Thank you for joining us today. We are uh, involved in a case uh, um, surrounding a paternity of twins. Mm -hmm. um, and Ms. Upshaw has used a phrase that we hear a lot in this courtroom, that twins run in the family. And I know I've heard it a, at least 100 times. And so I wanted to get more insight into this. Does it pass down somehow? So it's a good question, and it's an interesting question, because twins come in two varieties. Yes. We have identical twins. We have fraternal twins. So with identical twins, it's completely random. Are these twins identical? Or are these twins fraternal? They're fraternal. They're fraternal. They're fraternal. fraternal. All right. Okay. So, with fraternal twins, it gets a little tricky. The twins come from the mother producing too many eggs. So, she releases a bunch of eggs. The sperm's there. They make two babies. As far as the father of the baby's concerned, he can bring nothing to the union with the mom to make twins mm. at that interaction. So they mm. can be in his family. Mm. He could pass it on to grandchildren, but he could not cause her to have twins. Mm. So it really has nothing to do with these two twins, the fact that there are two sets of twins on his side of the family. Likely coincidental. Mm. Mm. So, Miss Upshaw, you look disappointed when you hear that. Yes, Your Honor. Because that was what you were holding on to, that these twins were yours because you thought it was some type of family connection. Yes, Your Honor. And that's, I can see that upsets you to hear. Yes, Your Honor. Have you taken a moment to think about if the twins are not yours? No, Your Honor, I haven't. 
You know, she fake and she is very dramatized. Like, she just, she's a very fake. Like, she's very fake. Let me tell you something, y'all. Both of them fake. I'm gonna keep it like that. Both of them fake. I'm just sick and tired of it. It's just like, I'm not with the drum. I'm not with it. I'm just ready to get the DNA test I'm over like with. I'll form mine. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Take then, care of me in that life. I don't wanna deal with both of them. Because you say that the, the drama between them is just, it it just, it gets on it's, your nerves. It, it gets on my nerves. That's why I'm in here just trying to get it over with and get it if, off my if chest. They're, if they're not, what if happens they're not, if they're not? Hey, I just walk out, be a man. I'm out. She be a man. I you ain't take care of them anyway. Man. But you're still legally married. Yeah. Yes. Can you but we're on divorce. Girl, your honor, I'm a, your honor. <laughs> That's me, I'm here. Ooh, your honor. <laughs> I'm still here. Listen, there's one more baby. Yes, ma'am. Brooklyn, one month old. Mm hmm Beautiful little girl. You have doubts surrounding the paternity of Brooklyn as well. Ma'am, young, this is my first time I ever seen that little baby right here. You've never seen her? Never. No. Never. No. Did you never saw her either? I did you say, have it? I ain't say me, oh. I'm talking about mom. Did I, you ever have an opportunity to see her? Ma'am, on my way, the day of the day when I taught the show and I had talked to the, someone who bought the show, my son had talked to her. I, I got on the train, I was going downtown. I was on the train, I got off the bus, and I see her, she got a little tank top shirt and pushing the scroll and got Kayla with her. So Kayla started saying, see, see, trying to show me, she kept slamming it, kept slamming the thing back, slamming the thing back, like she didn't want me to see the baby. So I just politely just told her about the number, gave her the number to call, you know. But other than that, I'd never seen this baby. She ain't sent me no picture, I'd never seen this baby. And matter of fact, I hadn't even seen her when she got pregnant since that, since the children, since Christmas. You know, so I what was the status of your relationship with Mr. Mason when you got pregnant with Brooklyn? Where were you I mean, all in this relationship? We was living, we was living together, but he left. Like that's how he do sometimes. Like when it's time to pay rent, he would disappear on me. Like go back home to his mother. Three, four months. How ago, many I, kids do you have, Miss Mason? And I have six too. You have six kids. Yes. And how old are you? Twenty-four. Miss Mason. You could have 10 children if you keep going like that by the time you're uh, my two 30 died. years old. My two died. What in the world is a young girl like you doing just having all these babies? Are you in school? No. Are you working? Not yet. I did, I'm, I'm on paternity leave, but I got a job. You do my... have one? Yes. Listen, babe, listen. I know you say your tubes are tied, but the behavior that led you here you, you, you can't keep doing this. That's a lot of children. It is. A lot of responsibility for a young girl. Yes, I'm taking care of them by myself. Even when, they, when the results do come out, I know he's still not gonna take care of them. He's very like selfish. All he care about is himself. And don't get me wrong, I know she would, she would help me. She will help me, but it's not her responsibility. I didn't lay down with her. And she know if them come back to be my grandkids, she know it ain't gonna miss a beat. I'll take out my mouth to put in there. But this is what I'm saying to you about, you know, you a mama's boy, you in the middle, he's a mama's boy, you in the middle of it, you this. In many ways, she never got to see the true circumstance of what it would be like just to be with Mr. Mason on her own because you were always in the middle and you were always taking up the slack. And so, so for her, the kids, it was gonna be handled. Yes. Cause you're gonna handle it. Yes, Your Honor. We've got to now raise up the grandchildren and these young people yes, so should. they can be the parents they need to be if in fact these are your grandchildren. Yes, and I have that answer for you right now. Yes, Your Honor. Jerome, the envelope, please. <laughs> these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Upshaw versus Mason, when it comes to three-year-old Caleb Mason. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Mason, you are the father. Mm. Are you ready for the next result, Ms. Mason? Yes. What are you feeling in this moment? I'm very hurt. I, I never cheated on him. Never cheated on him. Would you like me to continue with the next result? Are you all right? Yeah. All right. In the case of Upshaw versus Mason, when it comes to one month old Brooklyn Mason, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Mason, 
you are the father. Mm. The last result reads as follows. In the case of Upshaw versus Mason, when it comes to two-year-old twins, Carrie and Kawan Mason, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Mason, you are the father. Woo. I give her a hug. Are you okay with that? Mm -mm. She doesn't want to hug. That's fine. Mr. Mason, I see you feel emotional in this moment. Are you angry? What are you feeling? I'm happy in my eye. You are? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. I just want to be there for my kid, and that's all. Mr. Brown, just two and a half months ago, it was revealed that your 18-month-old son, Colby, may not be your biological child even though you currently have full custody. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you've dragged Ms. Stewart to court to prove that you are Colby's father because you fear if you are not, you will lose him for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Stewart, you admit you kept the secret from Mr. Brown but claim the truth is the truth. And the fact is, you were secretly cheating on him and you appear in court today to prove that the other man is the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Brown, tell us, What's at stake for you today? Everything's at stake, Your Honor. My whole entire family knows him as theirs. I have two grandmas that have Alzheimer's that know him as their grandsons. My 14-year-old son knows him as his little brother. My house is a more stable home for him. It's a place where he's taken care of, and I know it's the better thing for him. So, Ms. Stewart, you're saying that you know for certain that he's not Mr. I'm Brown's biological child. I'm 100% sure he's not the father. And you understand what's at stake, though. You understand that Mr. Brown is saying he has a healthy, happy upbringing in his home. I know home. he's with me and when he's going to be happy and healthy. I can provide that for my son because I've been working my butt off every day going without seeing my son. I see him once a week. What's that to a mom who has raised and gave birth to that son? Mr. Brown, you have custody. I so... How did you even find this out? Well, because after she moved out, she asked me if I wanted him for a couple days while she was moving her things out. She called to tell me when she was coming, and I told her that I wasn't going to give him back at that point in time because I knew what my rights were. I knew that the living situations at my household Yeah, and I have a right to see my son. Where she was at. I mean, I've got a five-bedroom home where he's got his own playroom, he's got his own bedroom. When did she say to you, but this is not your child? Right then and there. But she waited almost five days before she brought the cops to my house. Oh. If it's not my kid, why didn't you come that day with the cops? So what happened when she brought the police to your house? You know, at, by that time, I'd already talked to one district attorney and three police officers who told me the same thing that I already knew, that by law, I did not have to give him back due to the fact I signed the paternity affidavit. I was on the birth certificate. And... The cop that she brought was probably the only one on the force she could get to side with her. And he came and told me it was in my best judgment that I give the child back. And I asked him if it was in, you know, my best judgment or if by law I had to. And he said in his opinion he thought that I needed to, but there was nothing he could do about it. So therefore I asked the officer to please leave my residence because there was nothing he could do. You were trying to take my son away from me, and that's what you did, exactly. Rip my son from my life, from my home. And when the results are say that you are not the father, I am leaving today with my son. That is guaranteed. you're so confident. Yeah, I am confident, because he don't look like you. He don't look like anybody else in the family. He looks like the supposed father and the other supposed father's elder baby. What did you say exactly to Mr. Brown that day? I'm just... Upset and hurt because he took my son from me. And that is when I told him, texted him, said, okay, I said, he is not your son. I know I should have told you in the long run, but that is not your son. That, that was he after she lived in my household for over three years and mooched off my family. No, I never mooched off your family. It's more like your family was given to me. <laughs> They're being generous. 
Miss Stewart, <laughs> why did you wait so long to tell him? Like, why not tell him before so he would have never had the child in the first place? Because, Your Honor... Your Honor, I really truly believe that my son was Mr. Brown's. Because at that time, yes, I was... I went to another friend to comfort me. Because at this time, Mr. Brown and I had decided to take a break. So I went in that time and talked to a friend like I always do. Comfort and friends. And one thing led to another and my son was conceived. June 13th. So honestly, when my son was born, my son did look like Mr. Brown. And it looked like the son of his family. So that is why I have withheld because I was happy. I was in love with him. And the fact that my son was going to be raised up in a good environment and good home. Thinking that I had a good man on my hands. What, what changed? What changed was when he decided to take my son from me. So you broke up and then he wanted custody. Yes. So if you had me. stayed in the relationship, would you have ever told him that this may not be his child? No, because I honestly, because being with a good man like Mr. Brown. The same thing. Is this that you don't believe he's the father or you're just unhappy that you broke up and he took the child? No, I believe that he is not the father of my son. I'm a thousand percent sure. And I know the truth needed to come out. It should have been sooner than later, but it came out. What was your reaction, Mr. Brown? You're lying, I don't believe I, that. Or did you think, I, well, yeah, you were kind of getting missing back then. I was dumbfounded, Your Honor. I was dumbfounded. I, did, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I, I've lost a lot of sleep. I've shed a lot of tears over this whole situation. I mean, I'm the only thing about that, that my boy's got. When you first got the news from her and she dropped this bomb on you, did you say, I want a DNA test? Did you think to get a DNA test? Yes, Your Honor. I called uh, DHS and talked to them, and they informed me that I needed to call Child Support Recovery, because that's who does the DNA test in the state that we live in. When I went down and filled out the paperwork, once they started running it, they informed me that I couldn't do the DNA test because Ms. Stewart had already filed child support on me. Wait, now, you're saying he's not the child's biological father, and you know that for certain, yes. and yet you've filed to try to get him to pay child support? How does he get an open case? I don't know, Your Honor. I'm not even quite sure. I don't understand that. But I never went and I never told them that he was a father and that I wanted child support from him because I even told DHS and the child support recovery that I did not want any money from him. And if he has custody, why is he paying support anyway? He don't. They can't get it from me. One, because she doesn't have him. And two, because I'm on disability. So, Mr. Brown, you have a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. State your name. Sarah Teske. Ms. Teske, thank you for joining us. You are... I'm his girlfriend. This is between me and Mr. Brown. Not me, Miss Teske. Well, and Ms. Mr. Brown. Well, Miss Teske takes care of your son. You don't. Yeah, and Miss Teske ain't supposed to be around our son. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I know what it's about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving That's forward. Miss Teske is supposed to be around yeah. Billy Andre yeah. JT. Moving forward. Yeah. Moving forward. So, Miss Teske, what, what do you have to add? What do you know about this situation? Well, I know that right now I am both emotionally and financially involved in this whole situation. I love this man with all my heart. I know that he loves Colby with all his heart. He takes very good care of him. He, he's the best father in the world to that little boy. And I know this is going to devastate him completely if that's not his son. And I know the other gentleman that is supposedly the father. I've known him for a couple years, actually, and I've actually talked to him. So I do know that they have slept together because he did admit that to me. He didn't tell me around the time frame or anything like that, but he did admit it. Did the other him. guy think he was the father? No. He said he doesn't believe Miss Stewart whatsoever. So, Ms. Stewart, let me ask you again. Did you go down and file paperwork or sign anything no, requesting Your Honor. child support? No, Your Honor, because I went down myself to see if I can get this DNA started. And they said that we couldn't do nothing because he has signed the paternity affidavit. As you were going through the process, did you tell any government agency, this is the father? The father is Mr. Brown? No, Your Honor. Jerome is saying adding up. Your Honor, she, she's, she's still getting all kinds of benefits for Kobe, and she doesn't even have him. That 
then sheds some light on why they would be coming after Mr. Brown for child support. If you're receiving some type of state assistance, they want their money back. So, Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor? You are here requesting a DNA test to prove that you are Colby's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. With the understanding that the result may indicate that you are not the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. But you are the current legal father of record because you're on the birth certificate and you have custody. Yep. So you do understand that you are basically putting yourself out there in a way that you would not have to because in the eyes of the law, you are his bi... You're, you're his legal father. Yes, yeah, sure. It, it doesn't matter whether or not you're his biological father. When you execute and you put your name on that birth certificate, you're saying, I'm responsible for this child. This child is mine. That's why you have custody right now. So why is it that you're continuing this pursuit and pressing this issue? Because Miss Stewart named him after my father, who's deceased. Mm. He's got my father's full name in his name. So like I said, I both thought and believed he was your son. But as our son got older, I started realizing he was not your son. Kobe's got two middle names, which was my dad's first and middle name, and then, of course, my last name. So my dad's whole name is in Kobe's name. And I honestly feel that me and Kobe both deserve a right to know. Mm. Okay. That I understand. You just want... You want the truth. Yes, Your Honor. And you are willing to put it all on the line for the truth. I've raised that little boy for, eight, for 18 months, almost 19 months. That little well, boy's my world. That little boy's going home with me tonight. No, he's not, because he's going home with me. When it determines that he is, that you are not the father, he is going home with me today. Miss Stewart, you do understand if there is a custody order in effect, you could get into a little bit of trouble if you try to just take your son. I mean, one thing we can say is it is your son. So I want to caution you to not do anything out of emotion or just to stick it to Mr. Brown, revenge. That will put your freedom in jeopardy. Because then, what are you gonna do? He gonna go right back to Mr. Brown's. You have to handle things the right way, even as hard as it may be. I see this is making you very emotional, and I know, as a mother, it must be difficult to be without your son. It is. But, Your Honor, she has the right to come see him anytime. There's open-door policy in my but house. But it's so sad that you don't let me have a one-on-one -on -one with my son. No, because You don't let me take my son for a weekend. Every mom should have every right to have their son for a weekend. And you know, I do have every right. That boy is my world. And it's like you guys don't give a crap about how I feel or how it feels to not have my son. Uh, but yeah, I know you exactly know how you feel. You I know exactly of... how you feel. But no, you... you don't, because yes, if you I did, do. then you would understand and yes, tell I Mr. Do. Brown that I should have every right to that boy. Because he, where, where are you living at and where's he living at right now? And you know that's what's best for him. If, if Mr. Brown is not the biological father today, does the other gentleman, does he want to be involved in Colby's life? Your Honor, I talked to the supposed other father. He said he would, if the results came out that Mr. Brown was not the father, then he would like to step up and be there and do what he can. All right, I think it's time for the results, Jerome. Yeah. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Brown versus Stewart, when it comes to 15-month-old Colby Brown, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you, are not the father. Oh I told you. I told you. Right. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you need to sit down. You need to take a seat. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I just don't understand how someone could do that to somebody. 18 months, it's a long time. It's a long time. He's still my boy. Ms. Stewart, you said all along that you didn't believe he was Mr. Brown's biological child. No. And you know for certain it is this other gentleman. Yes, Your Honor. This court has, of course, provided you with the answers we're here to provide, which is the DNA testing and results. But now, this case will have to continue in your home state. The custody order that is in place is based upon his legal right acknowledgement that he's the father. He's on the birth certificate. There's no other way to cut it. This cake is baked. <laughs> so you can't just remove the child from his home. You're going to have to go through the process. And even if the court determines that he remain in his home, the court has that discretion. And let me give you a news flash. If you've ever handled anything in the court system, you know it's not gonna happen overnight. Right? No. Right? Right. 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 <laughs> Mrs. Hammond, you claim that after 10 years of marriage, and repeated attempts to get pregnant, a month ago, you finally gave birth to your miracle baby, Isaac. You need today's result to prove to the defendant, your husband, that this is his baby. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hammond, you claim your wife is a habitual liar and cheater. You say you know you are not the father and you have proof that she was with another man during the time of conception. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mrs. Hammond, explain the current status of your marriage. Currently, we're separated. We're on, on and off. Um, you know, after 11 years of being together, all we wanted was to have a baby, and we finally got that, and it's sadly brought us further apart than bring us together. All because of paternity doubt? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hammond, you stand here with doubt today? Yes, ma'am. Um, she's, um, she's had multiple partners, and, um, she, she lies to my face constantly. So, so, um, how am I supposed to believe someone who's, who's telling me it's night and it's daytime, you know what I mean? So you say she lies to you all, all the time? All the time, all the time. She, she, she had me in a snowsuit in the middle of summer. So, I, I want to understand this. I mean, you've been together 11 years, so the marriage has come to this? I can only be the fool so many times to, to where I'm putting my dukes up because it's, I'm tired of being that fool, you know? So, how do you know she cheated? I've had uh, numerous people that um, have told me they've been with my wife, you know what I mean? <laughs> they tell you? What happened? I've, I've seen a video of my wife giving oral <laughs> to, to another man. That is such a lie. There is no video, Your Honor. There is no video. But was there a man? And was there oral sex? In, in all honesty, um, there has been cheating on both sides. My husband cheated on me first. I took it the wrong way. About a year after that happened, I did end up... I, I've cheated on him. I have been with other people. It was known on both sides. It wasn't something that I hid. And it's sad. But... Listen, I understand. This was a messy marriage. There was cheating on both sides. I understand all of that. But if you're working and working for all these years to have this baby, why is there so much at stake and so much on the line? Why is there such paternity doubt? Because, um, I, I had... We had went... To, we had left California and went back to Texas to be with his family. Um, we went out there. Um, I had to go back to California to handle some things. More than once. And um, when I had got back, I had found out that his family had encouraged him being with somebody else. He was with somebody else while I was gone. Um, at that I point... with somebody else. At that point, we truly had been trying to work on our marriage, and it was, it was devastating to me. So what did you do? Um, to be honest, um, I, I did end up leaving Texas. I went back to California. So soon after she left... To go to California, she tells you you're pregnant, right? Correct. Take me back to that day. She, um, 
she tells me she's pregnant, and um, at first I was uh, ecstatic, you know, but then um, she she's um, texting uh, this man that she uh, loves, right, and um, oh. saying a whole bunch of things that would uh, lead me to believe that she's uh, more than friends. All right, you have some evidence you'd like to show me, yes, Mr. Hammond. Yes, ma'am. Rome, will you please sure. Thank give you, me sir. that evidence? Thank you. <clears throat> this evidence is what exactly? It's um conversations with my wife and another man that that, that should not be spoken. And um Oh, oh. She's in the same place as th this man is. You know what I mean? And um And you posted these to your social media. Correct. You said <laughs> How does your wife of 11 years text people she's cheated on her husband with messages like this after he loved her enough to stay with her and forgive her. Right. And the messages read as follows. The other man writes, so good to finally see you. You look hella good, babe. Made my day for show. Ooh. With four kisses. He writes, I miss you already. And then you write, Mrs. Hammond, just made it back to sack. So and I miss and you already, man. too. Ooh. And then the other man says, thank you for texting me. Can't wait to see you again. Kiss, heart, kiss. Right. <laughs> this doesn't sound too good, Ms. Hammond. I'm, I'm sure it doesn't. I mean, I know what I have and what I haven't done. You saw this man. Um, yes, I did. I met him at our local county park, um, said hello to him. It was a friend that we had both worked with. And it was nothing more than that. It was somebody that was probably trying to get at me, but nothing I was going to involve myself with. Now, hold on, Ms. Hammond. Listen. Don't waste my time. This is not an exchange between a coworker and you just met at the park for a minute. It ain't that many kissy faces in the world uh. that you got to type after you meet a coworker at the park. Mm -hmm. This is more than that. Now, whether you slept with this person, I don't know. But you wouldn't be in paternity court had you not slept with somebody. Yes, Your Honor. That's just the truth. So, Mr. Hammond, you believe that this person could be Isaac's biological Correct. father? Yes, ma'am, and uh, numerous others. I mean, there's... She, she's moved so single, I, I don't understand how she claims to be a married woman. So, can you take me to the point when Isaac is born. Were you at the birth? Did I was. Did you participate? I signed the birth certificate and, and um, I'm the last to, to the, the last Hammond. So if I don't have a son, then my family's name is done. So, um, I, so I maybe let, I rushed to, uh, to want to be the father. You know I what I mean? I had let him know my water broke. Um, he showed up to where I was living. He, um, I said, okay, are you going to bring me to the hospital? He said, no, drive yourself. He left, he left me at my house. He left and went to the casino with another woman. Mind you, after my water broke, I had to drive myself to the hospital. He didn't show back up to the hospital until 20 minutes before I gave birth. And he, he was there. He cut the umbilical cord. He um, stayed for about maybe 45 minutes and he left again. I didn't see him until the next day. Uh. Mr. Hammond. You were at the casino with another woman while your wife was giving birth? I was at the casino gambling. I wasn't with another woman. <laughs> like... But why were you at the casino gambling if your wife's giving birth That's a good to question. the baby you yeah. prayed for? Right. I, I, can't, I can't have an answer for that one, because I don't know. What kind of craziness is this? <laughs> right? Now, that's one we've never heard, Jerome. I haven't heard that one. My water broke. Great, I'll be at the casino. Right. <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> you know, it's sad because I wanted nothing, we wanted nothing but to have a child. And For years. I would have thought that our son would have brought us closer together and would have fixed what we had lost in the last couple of years by the horrible things that have been done between the both of us. And it just is devastating that our, our son, you know, might have made myself happier, and I don't know what it did for him, but it definitely tore us apart even more, you know? This is sad. You know, I mean, if there's this much cheating back and forth, I mean, there's no way a relationship or a marriage can withstand this. Can you tell this court, how many times have you cheated in this relationship? 
Four. Four. Mrs. Hammond, how many times have you cheated? I've been with three other people. She's... I, I know at least six that, that, that she's been with. So, so there's no reason to fake he the believe, funk. He believes that's so I believe people. you've been with more than six. I believe you've been with 13. And again, he... 16. Why are you saying these numbers? Be, be, because um, she would tell me anything. I mean, I've, I've been the, the brunt of the joke many times. You know what I mean? So it's, it's hard to, to, for her to say, this is your child. I mean, the, the baby could have came back Ethiopian, and, and she's going to tell no. me how beautiful my baby is, and I'm just... That's not true. It, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? So you saying she just tell you anything? Yeah, she... she I, I've numerously been paddled by the the teacher because of believing my wife. And she, and for her to act like she admits things to me, I have to literally have footage of her doing these things for her to acknowledge they exist. I just acknowledge I cheated. I mean, I've been very honest with him. He just wants to believe there's more. He wants to constantly, maybe he wants to keep the problems. I don't know. No, ma'am. Well, you've brought a witness to court. Yes, Your Honor. And I'd like to hear from him. Please stand, sir. <laughs> Step over to the podium. State your name for the record. My name is Jonathan Hale. And what is your relationship to Miss Hammond? I am her twin brother. You are? Yeah. All right, so, Mr. Hale, what do you know about this paternity situation? Well, I remember their relationship from its inception to now. I've been more or less a part of it, you know, just being her brother through this whole entire uh, adventure as you might say. Adventure it is. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least, to say the least. And, but we and... don't know where we going. Right, right. As far as paternity goes, they wanted it, uh, Isaac, because they thought it'd bring him closer together. And I think that's what everyone was kind of hoping for, especially uh, William over here. And as soon as Isaac was born, as much as William wanted to be a father, I think, he was still uncertain about paternity, so he was kind of hesitant to get too involved with Isaac, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I've had to step in a lot and kind of pick up the slack and just try to look out for my nephew as much as possible and to help out as far as you know, feeding that, him or changing diapers or whatever it takes. So you've had to step up and basically be the dad instead of being the uncle. Yeah. Just try to participate in any way that I can to make sure Isaac gets what he needs. So you've heard your sister's testimony. Yes, ma'am. She admitted she cheated three times. They've admitted the relationship has been messy. Do you believe there is any chance that maybe Mr. Hammond is not Isaac's biological father? It would be foolish to think that there is no chance that it couldn't be his. I mean, there's always a chance if someone cheated that it could be someone else's. Just on a logical outlook. Has your sister said anything to you related to the paternity question. She has not, Your Honor. She has, uh, if she does know something, she has kept it solely to herself. Miss Hammond, did you ever tell any of the other guys... No, no, Your Honor. ...about your pregnancy? No, Your Honor. There was nobody else to tell. That's my husband and that's his child. I don't believe that, Kimberly. Facts. You, you were in California multiple times. Yeah, I understand that. See, this is the problem when you let relationships get this messy, because you might be telling the truth, yeah. but Lord only knows what happened. It's just been such a mess. Or as Mr. Hale said, such an adventure. Right. But it's obvious right now we lost. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Hale, for your testimony. You may be seated. So what are we hoping for today? I want him to know the truth. I want him to be a part of his son's life. I want him to be the father he promised me that he would be. I want him to be a husband again. I, I would like to have my marriage back. I want to fix it. I want to be a family because that's what we've wanted for so long. You want this marriage and you want this family. Yes, Your Honor. Very badly. How about you, Mr. Hammond? I, I would become a different father if I knew this, this was my child. I mean, I'm not going to raise the next man's baby. You know what I mean? And so you're hoping that Isaac is I would your be, biological I would, child. I pray. You pray he is. Yes, ma'am. So you want this baby to yes, be yours. Yes, ma'am. More than anything in this world. We finally agree on something. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so would you like to try to work I, on I the would, marriage? I, I would never. I meant my vows 
better and worse, um, sickness and health. So I would never want a divorce from her. But, but if, if, if we're not functional together, then we should be apart. All right. Well, I think I've heard sufficient testimony and I'm ready for the results. Jerome? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Hammond versus Hammond, when it comes to one month old Isaac Hammond, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Hammond, you are the father. God answers prayers. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Gotta step it up. I get that. It's, it's time to be a man. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Full word. speed. I'll give you my word. I know you've been on the slow speed because you didn't know if it was your child. You've been crawling. Now we can stand and we can walk step in this truth. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because this baby needs to know what, what being a man is all about. He's going to learn it from his daddy. That's yes, right. Yes, Your Honor. And if his daddy is sometimey, guess what he's going to be? Same thing. Sometimey. That's right. And the last thing we need in this world, I'm speaking for all the women, is another sometimey man. 